Hey friends, welcome back to the channel where we talk about how to boost productivity and build better habits. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the difference, and I guess my first impressions, my thoughts on the block reference system in Obsidian and kind of explain and compare how that differentiates or relates to the block referencing system in Rome Research. Now, a couple months ago, I made this video talking about how I switched from Rome Research to Obsidian. And then a month ago, I made this video talking about how I switched from Obsidian back to Rome Research, basically all because of Rome's ability to do block references. Now, everyone talked about how Obsidian was gonna do this, and I was like, okay, cool, great, but for now, I'm gonna stick with Rome, and I've been getting a lot of chatter about it. A lot of people have been saying, hey, Obsidian pushed an update where they launched block references. I guess they also have this publish feature where you can just press a button and publish straight to the web, which is pretty cool. I haven't checked that out yet, but that's for another video. So I'm gonna use the same example I used in my last video where I tried to explain uh, what the definition of tacit and explicit knowledge was and i tried to reference those inside of obsidian wasn't able to do that so that's why i switched over to rome so i'm just going to use that same example and we're going to see uh how this works so let's jump into obsidian all right so here we are in obsidian and as far as i can tell there are three different types of references that you can do you can do quick references defined references and then global references and global references are the closest ones uh that act like uh, rome does so here I have the uh, edit window here with the preview window here. So whatever I change to this page, uh, it's gonna preview there. So the quick references is uh, pretty simple. You, um, you just type the page name and then go ahead and type in what you're looking for. So like I said in the intro, we're gonna be using the examples of tacit and explicit knowledge because that is what I had difficulty with when I switched over from Obsidian to Rome Research. That is what I was trying to study and learn about. So if we go ahead and under quick references, we do the square brackets and type in uh, tacit. We see right here we have tacit, which is in the sort folder. And then we have tacit knowledge article on the digital product of uh, digital productivity pyramid the idea to reality production stack. So these are all page names. So Obsidian is looking for page names with tacit. And if I click tacit knowledge, and uh, all that is is a link to the tacit knowledge page, which is what I'm eventually going to want to link to, but I just want to link the actual definition inside of Obsidian. So that is just the basic linking. But once I press shift six, and I type that caret symbol, what we see here is each individual block inside of the tacit knowledge page. So I just want tacit knowledge refers to knowledge, skills, and abilities. That's what that paragraph, that section, that definition is the only thing I wanna to link to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press on that. And over on the preview window, we have the tacit knowledge that is linked. And if we click on that, it goes into the page with the block that I referenced to highlighted, which is pretty cool. That is uh, how you do the quick reference. And if want to actually embed that we just go ahead and press the explanation mark and uh or someone said it's it's like important with code so you press exclamation mark and then square brackets type in the the, the name and then go ahead and press shift six to get the carrot and then look for your block so that is a quick reference which is pretty cool and then over here in the preview window we can see how uh, we have the quick reference here with the heading and then that block embedded now the defined reference is a really cool tool let me click into this here and if we, so this is the block that we wanna to reference to. So this would be really helpful if you're studying a topic and you know that you wanna reference one area or one block over and over and over again in a research paper or whatever. This is where the defined references come in. You're basically creating your own block reference, which is really cool. So at the end of a block, if I go, if I go ahead and press the caret button, so shift six, and I can press A. So this is just basically a certain identifier that Obsidian is reading saying, I need to find the A I need to find the block that is linked A inside the tacit knowledge. So for the defined reference, instead of doing caret, you need to do shift, you need, you need to do hash, and then caret, and then you can do your identifier, which is A. So if I press A, whoops, press A, and then do square brackets. So if we go back into our block references example, because I use the identifier of A, it's gonna go ahead and look through my database, look through the tacit page, and then reference that block that I have A, which that is a really cool feature which you're able to kind of identify and play around with your code a little bit different, which I really like, it's cool. So for the global reference, uh, this is the closest thing to Rome research because the first time I saw this, I thought, great, 
super cool that you can do this in Obsidian. Uh, they're testing, they're iterating, they're seeing what people like about Roam and trying to add that into Obsidian. But I thought to myself, it's not the same because with Roam, it searches your entire database and you're not knowing where your block is because that's the glory and the, the beauty of Rome is the lack of structure. But with this, you had to actually know where that block was on the page that you wanted to recall, which I kind of didn't think was really cool. But when I saw this global references, I thought this is exactly what Rome is, which is really neat. So I'm gonna type the exclamation mark here and then do the square brackets and then type in two carats. So when you do two carats at the very beginning, it's gonna go ahead and look through your entire database and look for the specific block. So I want to type in tacit knowledge here and I want to do tacit knowledge refers to the knowledge, skills, and abilities individual gains through experience that is often difficult to put into words or otherwise communicate. So as you see, I didn't type in anything. The reason tacit knowledge is there is because that is the name of the page that it's, that it's linked to but I just typed in the block that I was using. So I think this is going to be the most popular and it's the closest to Rome. Um, that I've seen and that was also extremely fast. I know Rome is kind of a little bit slower So that was really really cool uh, But let's jump over to Rome and kind of explain how I would do quick references Define references and global references just so you guys can get a little bit of a comparison All right, so here we are on Rome and we have the same tacit knowledge page I'm gonna go ahead and shift click that see on the right side here We have the definition and then kind of that same little uh, block that we use so in Rome, to do kind of like a global reference search, you go ahead and press the two uh, parentheses there, and then I'm gonna type in tacit knowledge, refers to knowledge skills, boom. So that is a block reference. Now you see, it kind of has that yellow dash there, which tells me this block is referenced, uh, this block is a block reference, means it's not actual text on the page. Now, if you see in the tacit knowledge page, I have this little one right there. Now, unlike Obsidian, that's not saying that's an identifier, that's just saying this block is referenced somewhere else. So if I open that up, shift click, we see it's on the October 25th page, which is pretty cool. So similar to Obsidian is you can actually embed it. So we can go ahead and type in embed, whoops. Uh, I have to go E and then block embed there. And then right where my cursor is, I'm just gonna do the same thing. Task knowledge refers to skills, click out of that. And you see, it looks a little bit different. Now inside of here, I can actually manipulate this. So if I do, otherwise communicate, I can type in otherwise communication. Now it doesn't make sense, but you see it changes right here and it changes right here because this is embedded block. So this block up here is embedded right here on this page. Um, that is something that I didn't see that you could do inside of Obsidian because if, it, if we go back right here, uh, I can't type, I can't uh, manipulate this text right here. I'm trying trying my best. The only thing I can do is open up that link and it takes me back to it. So that is one of the downsides uh, that Rome allows you to do, which I think is pretty cool. Another thing you could do too is if you click on the block reference, you can replace it with um, a block embed. You can replace it with text. You can replace it with an alias. You can replace it with the text and an alias, or you can flip or you can switch this, which makes the block reference become the actual block and the original block become the reference, which is uh, it's pretty crazy. This apply children thing um, is what I think is really, really cool because say if this had children, so uh, children just means blocks that are kind of underneath it and this is a parent block. So if I go ahead and hit tab into that, that's gonna make this block right here a child of this block. So now if I click into here and do uh, apply children as references, now it's gonna fill out this page with all of this block's children which that I think is a really, really neat feature because it allows you to still use the bullet paragraphs and not have blocks so isolated because you can still replace it with uh, all the children and stuff like that. So, and again, you can do the same thing. You can click on this uh, and then you can replace this with uh, text. And if you do that, then this is, um, you can kind of manipulate this kind of all you want. And you see if I deleted that, it didn't delete that here because I basically what I did is I replaced that block reference right here with just editable text. So it's basically, this is a brand new block um, that is right there. So you can do a little bit more manipulation inside of Rome that you can't do in Obsidian, but all in all, I think uh, Obsidian is definitely really cool what they did, being able to allow the block structure. Um, and it is also extremely fast. I don't think it was much faster than Rome, 
Um, I also don't have a ton of things in my Obsidian database, so maybe that's why it's super fast. Uh, but so, but from everything I've seen, Obsidian is blazing fast, um, and Rome is just not really. Uh, it's, it could be a little faster, so just a little bit on the slow side right now. So that is the two block referencing systems with Rome and Obsidian. I know a lot of people have mentioned if you use this a lot and you export your markdown files and upload them into a different um, software like VS Code, it doesn't really know how to read block references. Basically, it's just kind of a blank identifier uh, and you can't really do anything with that. Um, you can't like link back to it obviously in VS Code or other apps like that. So I would definitely be wary of that if you use this a lot and use other workflows. Um, make sure you can actually use the block referencing systems in either Obsidian or Rome, whatever you choose to use. And uh, I'm certain, uh, I've heard a lot of people say that it's just not a very standard thing right now, but I'm sure as software develops and technology gets better and better and kind of note taking this referencing ideas and stuff like that, that kind of becomes the norm. Maybe we'll see that in a couple different apps and we've already seen backlinking in Notion. So you never know what's going to happen. That is it. That is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're a hater, just don't comment. If you're going to explain to me how Obsidian is so much better than Rome, I get it. People have their opinions. You like Obsidian. I like Rome. Let's be friends and chat about something else. But if you have a genuine question, I would love to answer that either in the comments below or you can hit me up on Twitter at Dalton Mabry. And if you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out this video right here, kind of explaining why I switched from Obsidian back to Rome Research or check out this video down here. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next video.